Good morning, Flosstube. This is the would-be Dreaming Stitcher back again today to share with you some of my works in progress. I was able to get yesterday's video uploaded. I'm very happy with that, even though I'm having to use a new app for it now and my editing abilities are a bit limited. But I want to get right on with my works in progress for those of you who have been kind enough to subscribe and to show an interest in what I'm doing. Uh, I'd like to let you know where I stand on those. I do want to um, Again, apologize for not looking you in the eye. I promise I won't say that every single time. But I also noticed in yesterday's video that you were having to look an awful lot at my saggy face and such. I just want to give a very brief explanation of that. Uh, you're lucky you don't have to look at my saggy arms as well. Um, uh, starting about nine months ago, I lost 50 pounds. And I've been able to keep it off for a little while. It's kind of stabilized. I did not do it for the weight loss. I did it for medical reasons. But when I bend over and you see like my saggy baggy face, that's why for those of you who may be a little on the heavy side and are concerned about losing weight because of consequences like that, you've already done it to yourselves. The sagging is not because of the weight loss. The sagging is because I gained the weight to begin with and it stretched things out. So if you want to be healthy, do what your doctor says and just live with the consequences because the weight gain we did all by our own and yeah it's our fault nobody else's and not the fault of the weight loss anyway so if you have to look at my saggy self sorry about that but i wanted to show you my works in progress so the f i have seven and the first one there's actually no progress on but i also wanted to kind of throw in a little bit about my organization today so it was the needlepoint that you have seen, the Bucilla kit, and I really do want to work on it. I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I've been looking up needlepoint stitches and I want to get to it, but there are no new stitches on it, so all I really wanted to show you was that when it comes to organization, which seems to interest some floss tubers, um, I just organize based on the project itself and what's needed. I believe I showed you the first time I waved that around that I have a lot of the wool on a floss fly. You can see it in that bag there. And some of the strands that have already been started are in a little box. And I said I was having trouble finding the needle, but that wasn't true. The needle's actually in here. It was the needle for my stamped cross stitch that had strayed, and I found it. But the needlepoint needles are actually a bit larger than tapestry needles. And that's so the wool and such can go through them. And so when I come back to that project, which I hope to do very soon, there won't be any issues with uh, the needle on that one. Okay, the second work in progress did have some progress, if you can call it that. It was so minimal, it's a little embarrassing to say progress. But there was something I wanted to add about it. Again, as far as organization, I did show you last time it was a kit and I kept all the floss on its original card. I used to do that with all my kits, but you're going to see in one of the upcoming projects that my method changed. It kind of depends on the kit, but I found that keeping it on the card for one of the other ones was not a good deal. Here's what my little bird is trying to become. Yeah, lots of glare, sorry. And here's where he is. And the progress as such is very little. I actually, let's get the right hand moving. Added a little bit of white stitching to his tail. And in the top of his tail, there's a band of white. That's actually white stitching and some more black, a little bit more white lines, and a couple of dark purple spots up there. Very little, just that little band of white and black and purple is all I got done. Um, I have discovered that I my limit for whips is either right around four, and I have seven, or it's just a matter of some of these things not being counted cross stitch. Because since I saw you last month, the things that were not counted cross stitch barely got touched. The needle point, not at all. This embroidery, just a tiny bit. The one I'm going to show you next, so few stitches that it's hardly worth showing, but I want you to again see my organization. And it's not that I don't want to do those things. I want to learn how to do them. I think part of it is a lack of comfort in how to do them because I have not done them before. So for example, a stitch too far showed the, an absolutely gorgeous embroidery piece she had done. It was large. It was a bird. It was the kind of style I love uh, with plant life. I, 
I can't even describe it. You'll need to look at her video. I believe it was in her first or second video. Might have been the second because I think the first was mostly a tag. But a Stitch Too Far's embroidery work was gorgeous. And if you can embroider well, you can do that. And I'd love to be able to do that. It's just that I'm taking baby steps now and I'm unsatisfied with myself because it isn't prettier and I have to, you know, make allowances that I am just learning and he's not going to be gorgeous the first time out. And I did say in my last video that people used to send their children to school to learn to embroider. So I have to be patient with myself. I do want to get a lot more work done on him because, as I said, I think I have too many whips. I only worked hard on four, no, three of my seven. Out of my seven, two didn't get worked on at all. Two got worked on so minimally that it scarcely counts, and the remaining three got all the attention. So my plan for the future is to try to whittle those down again a bit. I think that's going to be necessary. So my stamped cross stitch, I know you're in a bag here. There you are. I said I'd show you something about my organization. You can see I've got it in a bag. Yeah, there's a lot of flash and glare there, I know, with all its parts. I work it on a hoop. The only progress to it was a handful of pink stitches up in this corner on this flower. I didn't get anything else done on it in the past month. As I said, all my love went to my counted cross stitch and I have to change that because this is one of my resolution pieces and I want to finish those. But as far as organization, it started life on a floss fly. And I changed that. There's the, the card, not a floss fly, but a card. You can see it came with a kit card with holes. And I ended up doing what uh, my next project caused me kind of to do, which is take all the kit items out, put them in individual bags, and make up a little card. These, by the way, are inexpensive store brand small size sandwich bags. And a little card that tells me information about it, like the, see if I can get that to where you can actually read it, the symbol, the project it's for, the number that they give for that project, See, my focus is very fuzzy today. I'm not sure why. Um, and so that I always know what I'm doing. Then as I work, I'll kind of pull out the bags that apply to the section I'm working on or the color I'm working on. So if I was doing that flower, I would pull out all the pinks and yellows that are part of the flower and work on that and then stick them back in my little bag when I'm not working on it. So that's my progress for the stamped cross stitch. Very, very, very little. So what I have to show you today is mostly my other projects. Those are the ones that got all the love and all the attention. And at some point in my stitching, I switched from, as I said, with the kits, I used the little project cards or a floss fly if that was available. But I did buy boxes and uh, bobbins and for a while I put them put the bobbins in notebooks like this where you have pages that the bobbins go in the trouble is they fall out constantly this whole page was full of bobbins every page in here was full of bobbins but as I come to projects that need that color I'm taking them out and putting them instead into floss away bags I'm going to get to those in a minute, but having done a few projects with the Floss Away bags, or Floss Away style, I should say, because they're not always that brand. I will show them in a minute. But I found that to work so much better on projects that I kitted myself, instead of using the bobbins just for me, that I began doing my kits that way also, as you saw with the stamped one. So I just could not stand working on my sampan the way it was. I ended up bagging up every color in the sampan in its own little individual bags. Um, it had an organizer, but it's like they were all lumped together. All these colors that I have were lumped together and too hard to work with and pull apart, and it was just annoying. The ones in the litter, because they're the portion of the picture I was working on most recently, so I pull out the colors needed for that part of the picture and leave the rest in the box. And yeah, there's a lot of blurring happening today. Sorry about that. But the, I found that that was the only way I could make progress on my sand pan. I didn't want to have to fight with 
the project organizer card, it wasn't working for me. So I went to Little Sandwich Bags because of having long since moved my bobbins on self char self kitted projects to the floss away style bags which like I said I'll show you in a minute because I do have at least one project that's like that anyway here's Mr. Sampan this is the one of the three that actually got a lot of love this month the last time I showed it to you I had pointed out that the mountains I had like this peak and some of the next I think and mentioned that um, it would dissolve into half stitches as it worked down. So these mountains on this side are entirely done. A little more of the sky is done. The little slope leading up to the next mountain is done. Um, I've started this peak. There is more. It does go off to the side a little further. There's another peak. I've only done two of the purples in here. There's a third purple plus the half stitching. This still needs to happen. I told you there was going to be a big wide sail that would take up the middle of this side of the picture. And yes, I've started it, as you can see. Um, so pretty much I have, uh, I'll get myself to my place, all of this area is still to fill in. There's still a lot to go. It also has some back stitching. But I feel like I did make visible progress up there in the sail and the mountains and the sky. And I spent at least the available stitching time of one week of the past month on this. And I'm pretty happy that it's coming along. I want to get it done. My goal is to clear out some of these whips and get back to a number that I am comfortable with. As I said, I think that what I have seven is too many because I don't end up working on all seven. Also, I have some holiday projects in mind that I want to get started. So, the Sampan hopefully is going to be considerably more done by the next time you see it. And so will uh, one of the other projects coming up here. Okay. So I mentioned the floss away bags. I think I'm going to do this one a little out of order because I think that, yeah, I did the little bird while I was waiting for this frame to arrive. This is my one that's going to be little gray birds in a tree with berries, and I have not put a stitch in it. It's the one that I had kitted up and bought the Edmunds handy clamp frame for to see how the frame worked here with the cotton batting to protect the fabric and I didn't stitch on it but I want to show you that as I do get to my plans in progress I kind of kitted myself into a corner in that I have to do them all in a certain order what happened was the big charts like the Orenco and the Artisies that I've kitted up I waited till there was a sale and then I went and bought all the floss for those. So I went to the store and bought all the flosses they needed without seeing if I had any of it already in my stash. I did that after having kitted up nine other projects and for those I started with what was in stash, listed what was needed, and sort of overlapped each one. So on a piece of notebook paper I said like this is birds one, birds two, there's a bee I want to do, there's a, a Bordeaux bell pull with grapes on it, there's more projects on the back, and so I would list the colors needed for that project and then kind of check off which ones I already had in my stash. Yeah, I know this is really primitive, this isn't high-tech computer age people, but I would see which ones I had and pull them out, and if they were needed in more than one project, I would check them off in that project as having them in the previous one. So all of the colors that might be needed in bird one, the one that I just showed you that I haven't progressed on, are actually in my project bag for bird one. And I haven't done much with him yet, but he has kind of a bag within a bag because I can actually fit his frame in that large bag. And in there, this is where I was using the floss away style bags, which in some cases have actual bobbin floss in them that came out of my bobbin stash and in some cases have, you know, a fresh skein. And the reason I like these is because, I haven't done it yet with this, but I'll show you on one coming up. The little holes and such, I can put them together with a metal ring once I really get to work on it and organize them that way. I can keep them in a drawer. I have to show you my drawer sometimes. It's not the kind of drawer you'd expect. I would have had to pull one out here to show you. Um, I have a card catalog. If you know what that is, you understand what I'm saying, but they fit 
beautifully in a card catalog. So they don't have to be on their rings for that when I'm not using them, when they're not kitted up for something. There's a lot of loose skeins in here because I haven't really done much on this bird yet. But as I begin to work with him, I'll begin putting them into their bags and you'll see on my white rabbit what happens after that. So not much on that one. There was a bit more on the sand pan. So next, I'm trying not to make this take too long by the way, that's why I'm talking so fast. Um, the robin. I want to show you how my little robin's nest is coming along. This is the one that I got on clearance and wanted to try out an artiste kit and see how it was going. And I had seen one other floss tuber doing it. It kind of inspired me to work on it. You can see that I'm using the method of putting them in little bags with a card that tells me its color and number and so on. Uh, when I'm working at my little table where I stitch, I just pull out the bags with the colors that are needed for the section I'm working on. Um, this is something of what he'll look like when he's done. Uh, I'm definitely having trouble with my glare this morning. Sorry about that. And this is where he is now. Last time I showed him to you, he was stitched pretty much up to the bottom of the bird itself. Nothing under the back end of the bird here had been done. Uh, none of, nothing, uh, in the front of him I had the branches. And that was it. So everything from the tip of these branches and the bottom of the bird on down is fresh stitching. He probably looks like he's getting close to done, but really there's a considerable amount of back stitching in this project as well. So he's not as near done as he might look because of all the back stitching yet to come. Not that much in the bird itself, there's some around the wing and around the outside of him, but all the branches have stitching, all the flowers have stitching to separate their petals, all the leaves have stitching, even the border has stitching. And so he's coming along. He is another one that I want to finish. My goal would be, hopefully by the time I see you next month, he'll be done. The sandpan will have come along considerably if not being done. I think the embroidery would have to be the other one because I have to give some attention to those resolution pieces that aren't getting done at all and the embroidery is the smallest one. So I've got to suck it up and work on him even though I'm uncomfortable with the results because I'm not very good at it. But it needs to get done. I'll never get better if I don't actually do it. Okay. But to finish this one, I have run into a small obstacle. And I think that I understand now why she's crafting did what she did to frame hers. I mean, it was a beautiful frame, but it was a, she sort of, sort of put it onto a quilted backing as a wall hanging and just sewed the whole thing. I can't sew, so that's not an option I have. But there is a problem when it comes to framing him. When you frame pieces, of course, you have lots of choices in your finished pieces. You don't have to make things into a wall mounted piece. You can do, as you know, pin cushions and coasters and towels and cards and flat folds and everything you can think of. But if you want it to hang on the wall, you basically have a couple of choices, either, either open frame or under glass. Now open frame can be things like this little bunny guy. This was actually the first cross stitch kit I ever had. He's not the first one I did. This one was gifted to me. I had no idea what I was doing. The directions were not all that clear. I struggled with him a little bit, set him aside, and finally came back and finished him after I really learned to stitch some years later. Um, I think he turned out very nicely, but when I did come back to him, the parts that I had done in that initial try when I had no idea what I was doing, oh, well, the back's just horrible, you wouldn't believe it. Anyway, he has no cover on him. He just hangs on the wall, open frame. There's lots of different ways to do open frames. I have others. I just brought one to show you. Um, this one came in a specialty frame. There is no glass or anything here. They had little objects on the windowsill too, but I didn't care for them, so I never glued them on or kept them. But we have what was meant to look like a nice view through a window, so the frame is a special frame that looks like a window. But they're open-faced. There's no glass. There's no nothing going on. So if you do have glass on your framing, it's a bit like um, drawings and pastels in artwork. You have to protect your art with some separation from the glass. And you don't want your stitching crushed under the glass. So you have a couple of choices. You can use a mat, obviously. And that's sort of what mats are for. They're just not there to look pretty. There's going to be a ton of glare, sorry. But here's one of my early pieces. Mostly I gave what I made away, so you're not going to see much, but early things I did. And 
it had a store-bought mat. It's not really as distorted as this angle looks. I'm trying to keep the glare away for you. But it had a store-bought mat and a store-bought frame, and it fit very nicely. And you can do that if the piece is appropriate for it. And the mat provides your separation from the glass. Another choice that you have is to put spacers in your frame. And I have two examples of that. Um, and the reason I went with spacers and not mats is because of the odd size that these are. I actually have more examples than this, but as I said, some are gifts, and I didn't drag everything out. But um, in fact, I think all the other ones I did with spacers were gifts that I can't show you. This one was an odd little size. He would have needed kind of a square frame. He's, he's a little wider than he is tall, so he needed a custom frame. And the fabric really is not much larger than what you see. It was kind of difficult to um, lace this one to the backing. And so he actually has spacers under the edge of the frame where you can't see them between the glass and the artwork so that the glass is not laying directly on the stitching. Okay. Um, this is a really expensive route to take, to have to custom frame them and go with the spacers. I have another one again with spacers and no mat because it would have required a, a specially cut mat because it's not a standard size either. So I went ahead and went with the spacers. And it's because it kind of had its own stitching already. And, you know, its own border. So having its own border, I would have needed a mat or a frame that was proportional to the border that the stitched piece had. And that was going to require special framing anyway. I originally thought to get a sectional frame for him and sort of fudge it with it being close to his dimensions. That was one of the things I was referring to when I said now that I go to the stitching stores, they don't have anything nearly what they had when I learned to stitch 18 years ago. Because you used to be able to walk into any crafting type store and find sectional frames. And that's not the case now. I've asked. They, they don't have them. Most of the employees have no idea what you're talking about. And the ones who do say, no, we don't carry them anymore. You might try so-and-so. So the only ones who did have them at all was Hobby Lobby, and they have one style of really ugly black matte, limited size, matte finish is what I mean, limited sizes of frames, and no way would I put those on a piece of my stitching. So he had to go with a custom frame. That was one of the things that took so long for him. But he has spacers also. There's no mat in here, but there are spacers between the frame and the dragonfly. So back to my wanting to finish the robin. Here's the problem. I thought, I told you last time, that he was 5 by 7. He isn't 5 by 7. He is 4 and 5 eighths by 6 and 5 eighths. Okay, so he's a little smaller than 5 by 7. Not a big deal, right? But the reduction in size is equal in both directions. It's not proportional. He's exactly 3 eighths of an inch too short in each direction which means a frame is going to look exactly like this picture looks in which I didn't realize. When you look at that, it's narrower at the top and the bottom between the border and the frame. If you look there, you have a little narrow band than it is side to side. The sides are wider because he's not proportionally reduced from 5 by 7. He's equally reduced to five and 4 and 5 eighths and 6 and 5 eighths. So my choice, if I go with a standard off-the-shelf frame, which is what I want to do, is to make him look like that. Or find some way of, you know, framing him completely differently like She's Crafting did. She was smart. <laughs> she was smart to do that. But um, I told you when I showed him to you last time that I got him because he was cheap and easy and wanted to try the kit and all of that, and I don't want to pay for a custom frame. I don't have the sewing skills to do what She's Crafting did. I want him as a wall hanging. I'm I'm just going to have to go with making him look like this. It'll bug me. Sort of like some of you folks that, that don't want to see things out of order or disorganized. It bugs me now that I see that this thing is not going to be equally framed all around. But I'm stuck with it. Uh, I really, besides the expense, another reason I don't want to go back to my custom framers I don't know that this really is that important, that you need to know it, but this is not the frame I chose for this. I went to them with the piece and picked out a frame 
and the one I chose was a brighter gold that was going to bring out the yellow in his body. You can hardly tell the yellow's even there now. It was to make that stand out. And I had a real hard time for some reason mounting this one and getting him laced and all. I just struggled and struggled and struggled. And when I took him into the shop, it turned out he was an eighth of an inch off square in one direction. So they had me leave him with them so that they could finish up the framing themselves. My intention was just to have them cut the glass and the frame and the spacers and I would have put it all together. When I came to pick him up, he was in this frame. Now this was one of the ones I considered, but it wasn't the bright gold frame that would have brought out the yellow in him. And I think the reason they did that was because the bright gold frame, I hadn't framed anything in so many years I forgot to even think about it, wasn't deep enough. And they should have known better. And when they were framing it, I think they realized it and they had to put it in a thicker frame with a deeper back. So when I picked him up, I didn't say anything about it. I went ahead and took him. But they had quoted me a price for the bright gold frame and they had said at the time that gold frames were a little more expensive. And I don't think there was any change in the price with the change in frame. I let it pass since they put it together for me and my cutting him a little crooked was something they had to work with. Okay. But they also, at the same time, sold me this frame that I showed you. And again, I had the stitching in there when I picked out the frame and they helped me choose this. And I ordered it and I went to pick it up and I hadn't left them the stitching this time because it wasn't necessary. Uh, I was going to put them together myself and they said, it's going to be a little tight. It should be fine, but it'll be a little tight. It's going to be a close fit. Yeah, the frame was not deep enough. It did not fit. It did not come close to fitting. I had to do something with it. Here's the frame. It's very glary. Sorry. You can see it looks extra thick here. I added all of that. I had to thicken the frame. The original frame was nowhere. It was way too shallow. Shallow. What do you call it? A rabbit or something? I can't remember what that part of the frame is that gives you the depth. It wouldn't fit. It wouldn't fit at all. I had to add wood to the back of my frame in order to be able to put the piece in. And that just really kind of annoyed me. <laughs> um, that they sold me a frame that wasn't going to work on him, and they had to have known it. They saw the piece, and yeah, it's been years since I framed anything. I should have known better. I should have remembered they have to be deep enough for your project. The professional framers should have remembered it had to be deep enough for the project. So I don't have any plans to go to them except when it's really necessary. And on this guy, it's not really necessary. I'll go ahead and finish him up. I'll do all his back stitching, and he'll go into a standard frame with a pre-cut mat, and I'll just have to live with the results because that's the way it is. Okay, I have one more piece to show you, and it is my last work in progress. It's my Orenko White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. And again, I have him in his own little project bag, which is large enough. These are like two gallon sandwich bag things, large enough for the rabbit to fit, with all these charts and materials, with all of his, um, little flosses and the ones I have worked with I went ahead and they are on the rings now there they are you can see the floss away style bags have rings I prefer the ones with the holes in the bottom the actual floss away seem to have their holes up in the sealed part and I think that would be annoying because it would kind of get in the way of the ring I should think I'll see what happens because I have floss away bags as well when I ever run out of these guys. Sorry, I should keep it in the frame. Um, I'll see what happens if I have to use the other bags. Anyway, this is my picture of what the rabbit is supposed to look like. I'll get that out of the plastic. Sorry about the crinkling so you can see. The plastic is so torn I probably don't need to keep it in there anyway. But as I told you last time with the Orenko charts, that is not a picture of the actual stitching. That's a picture of the original artwork that they based their stitching on. So you can't be entirely sure what you're going to get until you stitch it. That makes stitching it up kind of interesting because as you stitch along, you're discovering what the picture will really look like. Also, I was expecting, as I told you last time, that it would have 48 colors because that's what was advertised. But they ended up selling me the simplified version with only 30 colors. So I'm going to show you how he's come along. I apologize that I didn't do more on him. I wanted to spend a week, but I only made it from like Sunday to Thursday before I was a little burned out because of all the color changes, and that's with 30 colors. But here's my little friend, the rabbit, and 
I had meant to do more. <laughs> but I wanted to see what his face was going to look like. Last time you saw him, all of that yellow and red and blue, that was done. And here's our picture. I'll put it on the right side where you can see of what we're aiming for. So you can see his little face actually does that eye has the same character as the other eye. You can see his puffy little cheek and so on. But what I'm discovering is he's not all that much of a white rabbit. There's a lot of stitching still not done in that face, by the way. I meant to have more. There's still under his eye and around his eye there's more stitches that aren't in there. and You can't really tell what is and isn't finished yet, but there's a lot of empty space. Um, the colors are very much more intense than in the print because, you know, where he's dark in the print, the dark just jumps out at you in the stitching and where he's sort of orangey in the print, it's, there it is, it's pretty bold. Um, but he does, he's looking something like himself, it's not too disappointing. Uh, if he was the 48 color one, there he might be even more like the original, not sure. Uh, what I find kind of cool is, you can't see it that well, but here in his ruff that I've started, it really does look in real life like some kind of old print. All those different colors, there's a ton of colors. You can't tell. It's just like heaven and earth. You can't tell what all is going on in there. But somehow they come together to look like some faded old print. Um, there is no back stitching at all in this piece, so obviously his ruff is not going to have the careful lines that you see in the original print or anything. But I think they're going to do probably a good job of suggesting the original. He's going to look recognizably like the original, even if not exactly. It's sort of like what I said last time about the hearts being flat on top. You can still tell they're hearts. So I'm going to keep working on him. I feel like I haven't done much at all, but then I kind of compare what I have done to things like my bird, and, and I see that actually he's larger than I feel that he is. <laughs> it's just that he's such a large piece that this small part of him makes me feel like I've got a ton more to do. But as far as stitching, that's still quite a bit of stitching. So that was my last work in progress. That was my Orenko Rabbit. And I think I'm happy with him so far. We'll see how he turns out. And I hope to come back to you again in another month. I think I'll try to aim for the third Sunday of the month like I've done in July and August. There was somebody I wanted to mention yesterday and I left out and I don't remember where exactly I was going to fit it in to today's, but I was talking about having a little more respect for Aida because I don't think we would have the marvelous designs we do without it. And some of the projects, many of the companies that are using computers now to help them chart can make amazing projects. I don't think without something like Aida we would have ended up with people doing amazing designs like that that were just full cross stitches. When they embroidered, it was Joe Gregoire I wanted to mention, serious stitchers, which I think Joe is. That's really funny that she went to a shop and they didn't think she was a serious stitcher. Um, would have done all kinds of specialty stitches combined. They would rarely have done a piece like we're doing, like this rabbit or whatever, where the entire design is nothing but cross stitches. That just wasn't the way they worked. They might have done tent stitch or something, but I think Aida helped us get to that point. And when the shops are a little snobby, as they were to Joe, about not having the 32 count Lugana that she wanted, they only had 32 count linen because serious stitchers do linen, I think that was actually kind of a knock at the entire cross stitch community. Because in their mind it appears that a serious stitcher has to be someone that is working in all kinds of thread techniques. I, I'm trying to picture someone who's a totally serious stitcher. Probably some of the most serious stitchers in the world would be people like the Royal School of Needlework. Is that their name? They're not doing straight cross-stitch designs, I guarantee it. Um, they're doing amazing embroidery. They do embroidery for the royal family, you know, that kind of thing. Um, those are serious stitchers. And so to say that because someone is a cross stitcher who wants Lugana and is happy with Lugana and isn't looking for linen is not a serious stitcher it's kind of like saying we don't carry the supplies that cross stitchers want. Cross stitchers want this 32 count even weave but you're not serious stitchers. Serious stitchers only use linen. 
Um, a lot of serious cross stitchers do use linen. There's plenty of floss tubers that do, but yeah, I think that was actually not just a knock at Joe personally, as if she was not serious, but that anybody interested in that type of fabric isn't, you know, cross stitch is a special type of embroidery, but they're not real embroiderers because they're not doing all these fabulous stitches on linen, which some of you actually are, but maybe it's just a knock at the rest of us. Um, anyway, she was the one I wanted to get in there and, and just say that I enjoy her videos and I was sort of amused at the snobbery and I'm glad she found nice things to buy in their shop anyway. And it's their problem if they think that cross stitchers aren't really serious because that seemed to be what it really boiled down to. Anyway, I hope to see you next month. Thank you for listening. Please feel free to subscribe, like, all those things that people do on YouTube. I do appreciate it, and I really love looking at the rest of your videos, and I don't always get around to subscribing to all the ones I like, because I watch tons that I'm not subscribed to. But I'll try to be better about that, and I really do like your work. Thank you, and I'll see you next month, unless I think of some good excuse to show you something other than works in progress. Please, um, as I said yesterday, I hope all of you find something beautiful in your day. Every day, if you can look outside, the world's an amazing place. Usually, people are good. I don't know. There's got to be something good out there because there's too much horrible in the world. And even if it's just the stitching that you're doing, find something beautiful, and I'll see you next month. Thank you.